Hey everyone, this is Josh Hayward and welcome to episode 24 of 31 Days of Pumpkin. I've got the windows open behind me right now and there is a nip in the air. I think it's safe to say that fall has arrived, at least in the south. Uh, we've had 70, 80, uh, close to 90 degree weather over the last several weeks and we're finally kind of cooling off down into the 40s in the evening, which is amazing. These pumpkin beers are finally in their place. Uh, leaves are changing colors and it's a great time of year. All that aside, we've got a great episode for you this evening. Taking a look at two beers tonight. One from Sam Adams, Boston Beer Company, 20 pounds of pumpkin, and the other Cottonwood pumpkin, ale brewed with pumpkin and spices. So um, again, I've got a couple extra pumpkin beers um, as I get closer to day 31. So I'm integrating in uh, two some nights and uh, tonight's one of the nights. Figured we hit these two this evening. First, we'll take a look at the 20 pounds of pumpkin. This is an ale brew with pumpkin and spices from Sam Adams, the Boston Beer Company. Um, you Pretty much everyone's heard of Sam Adams. They are known in the craft beer industry as kind of being kind of a, the largest, most known craft brewery still operating. Um, and uh, I say still operating, you know, they haven't sold out to big beer or anything like that. Um, but yeah, Boston Beer Company, they do quite a variety of brews. I remember uh, my craft beer journey actually started with Sam Adams, um, and at, back in college, actually, I remember buying the uh, the the twelve pack there that Sam Adams used to to put out as a variety of a variety pack. Came with the Boston Lager, uh, the Honey Porter, uh, Black Lager, Irish Red, and something else. I need to look up what that that case was, but uh, that was kind of my first exposure to craft beer, and uh, enjoyed each one of those. But um, Sam Adams is known by, for putting out great seasonal brews year in and year out. Their Oktoberfest is pretty popular. Um, their, their pumpkin ales are popular pretty much every year. Uh, last year, I remember them releasing a couple pumpkin ales. I remember Pumpkin Batch and then also their Harvest Pumpkin Ale. This year, this 20 pounds of pumpkin is all that I've seen out by them. They may do something else again, kind of getting towards more, more towards Thanksgiving or, or into the, the winter months, but this is... This is all I've seen over the last few months from them. Uh, usually put out some pretty solid seasonal brews. I always like to give them a try and, and see what they've got. So we're going to test this one out first. Uh, this has got a uh, jack-o'-lantern on the front, and he's got his, uh, he's kind of been crushed. Uh, but 20 pounds of pumpkin, I'm not sure if they're putting 20 pounds in each, each one of the boils or what, but uh, yeah, we'll see what we've got. This is a very pretty beer, actually. Yeah, yeah, very, very pretty beer here. Kind of a deep amber color, a little more golden to uh, light, or excuse me, dark, dark gold towards the top, and then, then kind of a little gold towards the bottom, but definitely an amber ale. Um, beautiful, beautiful color, kind of some red hues in there, more coppery hues towards the top, uh, but very, very pretty beer. Um, rather clear, actually. Um, it's not transparent, it's still, still translucent, less haze than, than some of the pumpkin beers the last few nights. But um, there still is a considerable amount of amount of haze in it um, for a beer. It is um, way less than than as of what we've seen of late, though. Um, but yeah, still still leads me to believe that they did use some pumpkin in it. Um, then again, too, uh, Boston Beer is kind of a, a larger larger craft company. You know, they they probably have some methods of of cutting out some of that haze, kind of cleaning up some of the beer a little bit. Uh, but yeah, definitely some pumpkin in there. Giving it a little swirl. About lost some out of the glass there. Um, this has got a, uh, a, a tan head for sure. Tan frothy head. Um, very much off white there. Um, yeah, kind of a very, very pretty, pretty looking beer. Kind of reminds me, it looks a little bit like pumpkin pie crust in a way. Um, and especially with that color too. Just a very, very pretty inviting beer. Let's see what we've got on the nose. I'm not getting a ton, but definitely getting some some cinnamon and, and some other spices, a little bit of pumpkin in there. And then some, some malty notes too. I would kind of liken it to some caramel type notes. But it's a, it's a pleasant smelling beer. Nothing too over the top, nothing too in your face, um, nothing too overly inviting, kind of um, pretty just straightforward I would say. The maltiness is kind of what continues to surface the more more uh, more sniffs I get in there. So let's see what we've got. Cheers.
That's interesting. Um, at first sip, I get a little bit of maltiness in there. Um, there's a little bit of maltiness in this beer, and and I feel like it's almost like you're set up for a little bit more flavor. But then it really, really flattens out. Um, really flattens out. Um, some of those spices come through. Some of the the pumpkin pie spice. Um, and some of the cinnamon in there, um, and it, it kind of flattens out after that. I'm getting a sharp, um, a, a kind of a sharp taste in there. I'm not sure exactly what that is. It's reminiscent, um, I remember one of the other beers we've done in 31 Days of Pumpkin, it, it first taste is reminiscent of a, of, a, of a tomato juice, and I, I know it's not tomato, they didn't put tomato in it, but the, almost like taste memory in a way, I, I get that acidity and uh, the sweetness kind of going together, I, I guess it fires the neurons for, for me to think tomato, um, kind of a, an odd taste there. Little bit of spice on the back end, not much. I will say I'm getting some hops kind of in, in the in, on the back side of this beer, which is nice. Um, it's something we haven't been able to taste a whole lot of in some of these pumpkin beers. The, the hops have kind of been kind of sitting uh, sitting in the background. Um, as far as uh, Sam Adams brews go, and as far as the pumpkin beers they put out in the past, this isn't a favorite. Um, I feel like some of the ones they've they've done in the past have been better. It's a it's kind of a an odd taste in this beer. Um, like like I said, you, you feel like you feel like more flavors are going to come through when when the malt hits at the beginning of the taste, and then it just really flattens out. Really, really flattens out. I'm not sure why that is. Um, the beer is kind of a, a medium bodied beer, uh, relatively easy to drink, but I'm just not getting the flavor in it that I was expecting. Um, kind of one of the less flavorful beers that we've had in 31 Days of Pumpkin. So, um, all done with that one. Next, we are moving on to the Cottonwood Pumpkin, Ale Brew with Pumpkin and Spices. This is from Foothills Brewing out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, growing brewery here in North Carolina, um, doing some great things in the craft beer scene. Um, kind of that whole area in North Carolina, Asheville. Um, the, the Triangle, Winston-Salem, all, all that area kind of growing up as far as craft goes. Um, lots of good stuff happening there. Uh, this crisp dry ale uses cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and ginger brew with real pumpkin and a blend of North American and British malts to give mom's pumpkin pie some serious competition. A fall favorite skillfully brewed by Foothills. Sweet. I like that description. 5.3% ABV. And uh, yeah, the Cottonwood is what they named this. Um, this is actually Foothills Brewing Company out of... Uh, out of Winston-Salem. So let's see what we've got. And as you can already tell, this is a much, much uh, lighter beer in color than the Sam Adams. That Sam Adams was rather dark. Um, this is considerably lighter. Um, you're definitely getting, uh, getting that golden color in this as opposed to the amber color in that. Um, translucent for sure. More haze in the Foothills Brew than in the Sam Adams, and that's that's very easy to see. Um, you can see through this darker darker ale, and you can't har hardly see through that at all. Um, there is still some light coming through, but not not much. Um, kind of an, an, a white head on this one from from when I poured it. Uh, slightly off white when you give it a little swirl like this, but then when it settles out, it's it's definitely white compared to this one, was kind of a, an off white tan almost. Um, but yeah, great haze in there. Again, leads me to believe they they put the pumpkin in it for sure. Um, but very pretty beer here. It's so so neat how you know two pumpkin beers, but you look at them side by side, they'd be so different in in a variety of ways. And we haven't even smelled or haven't even smelled this one or tasted it. So just goes to show the variety that we can have in, in pumpkin brews. So let's see what we've got on the nose.
I'm definitely getting some cinnamon and nutmeg in here. Definitely getting some clove in it too. That clove is a uh, a very uh, prominent, or no, I would shouldn't say prominent, a uh, very discernible spice. A little bit goes a long way when you're when you're using clove in beer. But yeah, you can definitely smell the clove in that, which is is very reminiscent of fall. Not getting much malt in here, kind of more just the spice. If anything, just kind of a, a pale, you know, a white bread, toasted bread, kind of, kind of malty note. Uh, mainly the spices coming through in this. Yeah, um, but I should say it's, it's spiced, but not overly spiced. Some of these brews have been very, very heavily spiced. You can discern them, but they're not over the top, which is great. So let's see what we've got. Cheers. Definitely tasting the spice in this. Um, it's an interesting brew too. Um, not much as far as uh, the malt goes. Um, again, uh, white bread, maybe a little toasted bread. Not much. Uh, not much. Not much heavily heavy malty flavors there by any means. There's definite spice in this beer for sure. Cinnamon, nutmeg, clove. Ginger, the ginger strong, kind of lasts through the taste and even post taste, kind of giving you a, a dryness there. Can't say I'm tasting much pumpkin. Um, kind of more of a, kind of more of a spice brew, honestly. Um, yeah, can't say I'm getting a whole lot of pumpkin in this. Uh, kind of more of a more more highlighting the spices. If I, if I remember correctly, I think day four. We did Anderson Valley's Fall Horn and Ale. Um, that was a darker brew, kind of amberish brown. I kind of called it more of an autumn spiced ale. I would kind of put that in, put this in that same category. This is a lighter beer, but still kind of on par as far as the spices go. Um, interesting spicy, spicy flavor in this. I'm not getting much as far as hops go. This is a lighter type pumpkin beer, which is nice. Lighter beer, but then you have the spices, so it's kind of a catch-22, so to speak. If you like spice beers, you'll like this one. Um, if you don't, you, you probably won't won't tend to reach for this. I uh, can't say that it's a favorite um, as far as 31 Days of Pumpkin go. Uh, I can definitely appreciate both of these brews and and what they what they accomplish in them. Uh, but yeah, not not too bad for day 24. Two very different brews, as you can see. Very different uh, pumpkin ales very different uh, visions on what they wanted the brew to be, and then very different tastes, uh, aromas, flavors all across the board. So uh, day 24 in the books, 31 days of pumpkin. Thank you so much for following along. This has been a blast. Hope you've had fun as well. Have a great night. Cheers.